This little e-ink screen replaced half the apps on my phone, and it did it without notifications, ads, or some of the distractions that come with most apps. This is the Terminal e-ink display, and I'm gonna show you five surprising ways that the Terminal helps my smart home. And the last one is something I haven't seen anyone else do. Now before we get too far, let me answer the obvious question. Ryan, don't you already have tablets in every room for just this sort of thing? Of course. I have wall-mounted tablets, desk tablets, dashboards, and smart assistants, the whole setup. But here's the problem, these can behave just like phones. They're full of notifications, background apps, random pop-ups, and if you're like me, the temptation to just quickly fix an automation that broke and get totally sidetracked for the rest of the day. So what I needed was something simpler, a screen with no apps, no distractions, and nothing to fall into. Just the information that I care about, always visible in a calm, ambient way. That's why I was excited when Terminal reached out and offered to send me one to try out. I originally thought it would just be a minimalist desk clock, but after using it for a few weeks, it quietly became one of the most useful devices in my entire smart home. Now before I show you the five use cases, here's a quick rundown. The Terminal is a 7.5 inch Wi-Fi e-ink display that runs on battery power. That means it barely sips energy and can last months between charges. And because it's e-ink, it's always readable, always on, and never glowing at you in the dark. Plus, if you're big into DIY, you can actually build your own terminal using the same platform and plugins. All right, with that said, let's head into the office and get into the ways I'm actually using this around my home. The first way that I use terminal is as a focused dashboard for all of my everyday information. Instead of opening five different apps, I've got my next calendar event for my Google Calendar, local weather and air quality, a quick glance at my YouTube channel metrics, and any important reminders for the day and inspirational quotes. The key here isn't that it just displays data, it's that it displays it calmly. It's always on, always glanceable, and never pulls me into a rabbit hole. This alone helped me cut down on my screen time. Now what makes Terminal really powerful is its plugin ecosystem. There are dozens of plugins available that let you customize exactly what information shows up on your screen. It's from calendar integrations, weather, fitness tracking, package deliveries, and even custom data from your own APIs. It's built to be flexible, and the code is actually pretty easy to understand. One of the built-in plugins that I use and really like is the days left in the year. So you just know exactly at a glance how many days you have left in the year to accomplish your goals. Of course, we're at the end of the year now, so that's counting down, but it's still a great reminder. Another cool thing is you can actually go in and put which of your different plugins show up in what order. This is nice because you can actually set multiple playlists and have it go off at different times of the day. So if you wanna have a morning one that just shows your calendar and the weather, or an evening one that shows an inspirational quote or some fun bit of trivia. But you'll just have to check the list of integrations and plugins on the Terminal website. So next up is climate monitoring. And so we're gonna jump into the realm of Home Assistant here. You know if you've got kids, pets, or a home office, you probably check your temperature and humidity way more often than you'd like to admit, especially in the colder months. I'm using the Home Assistant Weather Station plugin and its integration. This lets me pull data from sensors around my home. Right now I have it set up to see the CO2 levels in the living room, the temperature and humidity of the main floor, my HVAC set point, and bedroom temperature and humidity. This particular integration allows me to have up to six different sensors from different parts around my home. Instead of bouncing between apps or different dashboards and home assistant, I can just glance over and instantly know whether the basement is too cold or if the bedroom is comfortable. Setup for this plugin is pretty easy. You will have to set up a few things in Home Assistant, including the integration, and then you'll have to go in and select your different sensors and tie everything together. This particular plugin will actually get data pushed from Home Assistant up to a terminal web hook. That's a little bit more flexible for those of you who might have some issues with port forwarding. But this simple view is great because it creates an ambient awareness of my home's comfort without having to go and grab a device. For the next two, I'm actually using the same plugin to visualize data from all around my home. And this third one has been surprisingly useful. Through a plugin called the Home Assistant Trend Integration, I built a live energy graph that shows my home's power usage throughout the day. This lets me recognize the rhythm of my house, plus I can check what the instantaneous usage is of my home. This lets me find out things like when the AC turns on or when the refrigerators are running, that big spike when I plug in the Tesla at night, and lets me know if I've left something on overnight that I shouldn't have. It's great because when I'm walking through the kitchen, I can look up and see, oh, maybe somebody left some lights on in the basement and we completely forgot about it. A lot of this is true because numbers alone don't really tell the story, but a graph on an e-ink display does. It turns energy usage into something visible, understandable, and easy to act on. 
It's also a helpful reminder to sometimes that I forgot to plug my Tesla in the night before and I didn't see that big spike overnight. Now you can use this exact same method for anything with time-based data. Now this plugin was pretty easy to set up, but it does require you to have external access to your home assistant. So things like Nabucasa or port forwarding will be important to get this set up. I've also had to make a few tweaks. So let me know down in the comments and I'll post my current code out to my blog. Now you can use the same plugin for anything with time-based data, which leads me to the next one. Now, if you've ever been unfortunate enough to kill a houseplant or live with somebody who takes it personally, this one's for you. I have a soil moisture sensor in the pot of my wife's Monstera. That sensor reports data to Home Assistant, which then sends a graph to Terminal. This lets me get a visual timeline of moisture levels over the past 24 hours. Now I am working on tweaking this plugin to let me do it over a longer period of time because this doesn't really change all that often. It's still really nice because even with only 24 hours of data, you can see if the plant has been drying up and needs more water, which actually this one does. And once I get this graph to represent a longer period of time, you'll see a better trend to know kind of approximately how often you need to water. This was great because my wife would guess and overwater or underwater the plant. And so now instead of having to go onto her phone and bring up the dashboard I built for her, she can just look up and see it in the kitchen. This turns plant care into a quick data-driven decision instead of a coin toss. This has helped keep this plant alive a lot longer than our track record would suggest. Of course, you can adapt this to any type of data that you want to represent on a graph. It's just as simple as going in and tweaking a few settings. And don't be afraid to dive into the code. It's really, really easy. I went in and was able to change the percentage that was in the original one to a W for watts or KW for kilowatts or leave the percentage for the Monstera plant. I'm really excited about all the different plugins that I'm going to probably end up developing for this because it's pretty easy to use and not a lot of folks have actually built integrations quite yet. Now on to number five, which is my personal favorite, controlling the terminal from Home Assistant and gathering data from it like battery level. Everything so far has been about displaying data from either other sources or Home Assistant. But here's where things get interesting. You can actually control and monitor the terminal from Home Assistant itself. Now one big caveat is the terminal only wakes up on a set schedule to refresh, so I can't actually force it to wake up and change the screen, but I can go in and change some parameters like what the next screen is going to be in order to control that. Now there is a little button on the back that you can press that will actually trigger a refresh, and I'm looking at possibly moving that to the side so that way I can actually press a button and have the terminal refresh itself automatically. This will be super helpful for skipping screens or other items. So all that being said, I've actually built a small terminal management portal inside of Home Assistant. And this is where I can actually see a live capture of what's currently on the screen because it's not here in my office normally, it's actually out in the kitchen. I can trigger a refresh, meaning that the next time that the terminal wakes up, it'll switch to a new screen, even if the schedule tells it not to. And also check things like Wi-Fi strength, battery level, and device status. This is super helpful for setting up things like a low battery notification to let you know when you need to take it off the wall and plug it into charge. This really gives me a lot of control and lets me open up some customization for the future. So when you monitor and control your e-ink display from Home Assistant, you really start opening the door to a lot of customizations. Here in the future, I'm looking to build some automatic dashboards. So for example, in the morning, it would only show a playlist of my schedule and the weather. Then at night, have it show a good night snapshot of all the main security elements in my house, like locks and doors. All of this is possible through their API, which comes with a developer version of the terminal. This is the part I haven't seen a lot of people experiment with, actually controlling the terminal, and I really think it's what makes it powerful, because it doesn't lock you into just an ecosystem, you can make your own stuff. And as a DIY person, I really love that. Originally, I thought the terminal was just gonna be another pretty desk accessory. Instead, it solved one of the biggest problems in my smart home and my busy life. I don't need to open my phone anymore to check just some basic information. Now that information lives in my environment, calm, always on, and distraction free. Now, if you want to dig any deeper or pick one of these up, I've linked the terminal down in the description. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see a video about setting up all the Home Assistant integrations. I really had a good time playing around with the code, so it's actually a fun platform to work with. And if you want more practical smart home upgrades just like this, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Now, what would you display on an e-ink panel in your home? Drop your ideas down in the comments. I always love to give inspiration from you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.